You have been asking about diabetic medications because most of you are on one or more diabetic medications, and yet 90% of you do not know how they work, the benefits, the risks, etc. Hi, I am Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I specialize in endocrinology, diabetes, and metabolism. I practice in Florida, but I'm passionate enough to help everyone in the world who struggle with diabetes and weight problems. After you leave the doctor's office, sometimes you are more confused than ever before because your doctor just threw two new diabetic medications, which could be pills or even injections. First reaction most people have is anxiety, fear, and that leads to frantic Google search and absorbing anything and everything without questioning their validity. Half of the time, information is above your head and you end up being more confused or scared. No more. This video will tell you everything you need to know about every diabetic medication. Watch the entire video so that you know all of your options thoroughly. Yes, this is a long video due to all the content that we need to cover. But don't worry, I created chapters for you so you can click to jump to a medication class or section that is more of an interest to you. But watching the entire video will make you understand the entire diabetes treatment spectrum. So if you have time, stick with the entire video. Let's start with metformin because this is the most commonly prescribed medication worldwide. I have many metformin videos, so please refer to them for in-depth or specific issues about metformin. Today, I will only summarize what it does, the benefits and risks of metformin. Now, metformin is one of the most well-established and successful treatment for type 2 diabetes. It has the effect of lowering the quantity of glucose in your blood. You can tell by your finger sticks your blood sugar numbers. It accomplishes this by decreasing the amount of glucose released by your liver and decreasing the amount of glucose absorbed by your intestines from the food you eat, right? Metformin is also thought to improve your body's response to its own insulin. Now, metformin is beneficial for almost everyone who has type 2 diabetes. It is also a smart option if you're overweight because metformin does not promote weight gain like other diabetic medications or some other diabetic medications. Now, the efficiency with which it operates is that it reduces the hemoglobin A1C by around 1.5%, which is quite significant. Now, let's talk about the risks or the side effects of metformin. That is the thing that sometimes you don't want to hear, right? Well, in a lot of cases, metformin might cause quite a bit of stomach irritation. It can cause diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain, not so much fun. It is possible that you will require a lower dose if you are suffering from kidney difficulties. Now, some brand names that have metformin in it are Glucophage, Glucophage XR, Riomet, Fortamet, Glumetza. These are some of the branded medications, but most people are on generic medications for metformin. Metformin was found to lower the risk of death as well in a study of adults with type 2 diabetes, which is good news. So overall, it is not a bad medication unless you have chronic kidney disease, then you have to be careful. Now, on the other side of the coin, there's a natural component called dehydroberberine that works just like metformin that can be used with or without metformin. And when used with metformin, it actually increases the effect of the metformin. As a reminder, our super berberine product has dehydroberberine in it and saline cinnamon at a high concentration. So it is a great addition to your metformin or an alternative to metformin if you cannot tolerate metformin at all. Next is one of the most popular diabetic medicines so far, but my least favorite, sulfonylureas or megalitonides. These medications are like amyril or known as glimepiride, glucotrol also known as glipozide, glinase or glyburide, the other name, are examples of sulfonylureas. Now the primedin is the generic name repaglinide and Starlix is nataglinide are also examples of megalitonides which work similar to sulfonylureas but they are a little shorter acting. After taking these medications, the sulfonylureas and megalitonides, your pancreas produces more insulin which in turn lowers the level of glucose in your blood. Now the problem with them is that they constantly stimulate your pancreas to make insulin without taking a break which ends up killing your beta cells. 
Wouldn't you die if you worked 24 hours without taking rest or sleep? Yeah. These drugs may be beneficial for people using metformin who cannot afford any other medications or supplements and are not concerned about the possibility of gaining weight and severe low blood sugars. I mean, it is better than nothing, but in my opinion, these meds are at the bottom of my preferred medications. I said it is better than nothing because just because you cannot afford anything does not mean that you need to let it go and drop everything and let your blood sugars run high. Because high blood sugar, as you know, can cause much worse diabetes complications. So if that is the only thing you can afford, please stick to it. But it is good to know your options, so that's why we will keep talking about other diabetic medications. Thiazolidindiones. A mouthful name, right? Well, the only medication left in this group is actually pioglutazone, also known as Actos, because the rest of them were banned by the FDA, either permanently or temporarily. For example, rosiglitazone in 2010, the most widely prescribed medication in this family, the other name is called Avandia, was linked to an elevated risk of heart attack and stroke, which severely damaged the safety reputation of thiazolidindiones overall. Nowadays, its cousin, pioglitazone, also known as Octose, is still in the market. These drugs lower the level of glucose in your blood by slowing down the amount of glucose produced by your liver and by assisting your body in responding more effectively to its own insulin. Thiazolidindiones, or pioglitazone in this case, particularly beneficial for those who are suffering from insulin resistance. They have the potential to reduce A1C by around 1%, which is less than metformin, but works in a similar way to metformin, and it can be an alternative to metformin. Now, the biggest problem with these medications, the pioglitazone especially, are fluid retention and possible worsening of heart failure, if you already have heart failure, and increased risk of bone fractures, especially if used longer than two years. There are possible, but not confirmed, risk of bladder cancer as well. FDA has warnings about these that you can find on FDA's website. Now, our sugar MD Super Berberine and Advanced Glucose Support are designed to help your body become more insulin sensitive and only produce insulin when you eat, which works similar to DPP4 inhibitors and GLP-1 agonists that I will be talking about next. And yes, you can take Sugar MD Super Berberine and Advanced Glucose Support together to get the maximum results. Our supplements also do not interact with other medications since they are made with natural food ingredients that do not interfere with medications. Now, inhibitors of DPP-4 and these drugs is a group, like some of you are on it, like Genevia, or known as Stagliptin, or Trigenta, the generic name is Lenagliptin, or Alogliptin, which is the only real generic one in this group. They are okay drugs, but they are less effective than most. The only advantage to them is that they do not cause low blood sugar, unless you also take sulfonylurea that we discussed, or the insulin, along with these medications. These drugs work by preventing the breakdown of a certain hormone called GLP-1 or glucagon-like peptide 1. So GLP-1 hormones are like postal service. They're produced in the intestines and informs your pancreas that there is food and blood sugar is rising. So maintaining a higher level of GLP-1 in the bloodstream allows the body or your pancreas to make more insulin while also slowing the release of glucose from the liver. Now, an important note that these medications are not near as strong compared to real GLP-1 agonists, which are synthetic and stronger version of the DPP-4 inhibitors, and this is similar to what your body naturally produces. Now, normally, increased GLP-1 levels also help with the weight reduction and reduction in your appetite, and slows the rate of your stomach emptying, which keeps you fuller longer, and they are all beneficial for weight loss. However, DPP-4 inhibitors like Genevia or Trigenta, they're not strong enough to produce the weight loss results that you get with the GLP-1 agonist, which we will talk in a second. Now, DPP-4 inhibitors may be beneficial for those who would like a little more support with blood sugar control, but do not want the risk of gaining weight by taking the medication, such as alternative to sulfonylureas. 
So it's a fair alternative to sulfonuria, but really for mostly for frail and elderly patients who cannot tolerate GLP-1 agents like Ozempic, Trulicity, Rubelsis, or Victoza. They have the potential to reduce the hemoglobin A1C by around 0.5%, which is very small as we compared, you know, as we talk about the efficacy of metformin or pyagliflozin. So for the price tag, they have around, you know, $500 a month. I'm not a big prescriber of these medications, except for the small specific group of elderly and frail patients. Now, what are the side effects of these DPP-4 inhibitors like Genevia, Trigenta, etc.? Well, some people experience nausea still and vomiting after taking these drugs, although they are not as strong as GLP-1 agents, but they also have the potential to cause inflammation of the pancreas on some very rare occasions. We call this pancreatitis. It is well known that this family of drugs can actually cause joint pain too in some people and sometimes even congestion in the airway and sometimes upper respiratory infection. Now, FDA warned and issued a warning saying that Ongoliza and Nesina that I didn't tell you about because I don't even prescribe them, but they are also associated with increased risk of heart failure. So I do not prescribe them at all and the insurance coverage is very poor. So in the United States, we don't even see people on these medications anymore. Now, GLP-1 agonist is next. Now, GLP-1 agonist or GLP-1 is a hormone as we discussed, and these are trying to attempt or mimic the GLP-1 activity in your body. These medications cause the body to produce more insulin when blood sugar levels rise following a meal. Now, blood sugar levels drop as a result of more insulin in the body after a meal. On the other hand, beauty of these medications is that they will not continue to force your pancreas to make insulin like the sulfonylureas do, and they are three times stronger than DPP-4 inhibitors. Some examples are Ozempic, Victoza, Rebelsis, and Bidurian. The disadvantage of GLP-1 medications is that all but one, which is Rebelsis, they all must be administered through injection, except Rebelsis is the only pill in this group. As with any prescription, there is a chance of adverse events, some of which may be serious. Uh, after you have been taking the drug for a while, the more typical side effects such as diarrhea, abdominal pain, some cramps or nausea and vomiting, sometimes even headaches tend to happen, but they go away in weeks or months. Now, low blood sugar hypoglycemia is a risk of GLP-1 agents only if you are taking sulfonylureas or insulin along with them. Typically, when I prescribe a GLP-1 agonist like Ozempic, I slowly start lowering the insulin or sulfonylurea pills. Same thing applies to our advanced glucose support and superberberine. So you should watch your blood sugars and the moment your blood sugar go below 100 mg per deciliter or 5.6 millimole per liter, you should start cutting on your insulin by 10 to 20 percent. And every time you see a blood sugar less than that, start taking half a tablet of sulfonylurea, for example, and eventually stop it. Again, monitoring your response to these medications or supplements is the key to prevent a low blood sugar especially due to insulin and sulfonylurea. Also, if you have a personal or family history of medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia, you should avoid GLP-1 medications. These medications have been associated to thyroid cancers in rats in laboratory research, but the risk to humans is unknown until more long-term studies are done. So far, studies do not indicate any human harm. If you have had pancreatitis, these medications are also not a good idea. Well, thankfully, you have other pharmaceutical or herbal options, even if you cannot take GLP-1 agents for one or the other reason. Next on my list is SGLT2 inhibitors. These medications have been fairly popular, especially recently. Some of them are, you may remember the names, Jardians or Farsiga or Stegolatro or even in Mokana, they work by making your kidneys to excrete glucose into your urine, lowering the level of glucose in your blood. They are popular because some studies indicated that the, they lowered the risk of hospitalization due to heart failure and possible reduction in the risk of overall death due to cardiovascular reasons. After participating in a trial involving individuals with type 2 diabetes and chronic renal disease, Researchers also discovered that in Mokana, Jardians, and Farsiga lowered the risk of progression of chronic kidney disease to end-stage kidney disease, and they also lowered the risk of heart attacks. Researchers found that the Jardians could lower the likelihood of dying from any cause, and in that research, people with type 3 diabetes, especially who had high risk for cardiovascular disease, benefited the most. As a result, 
People who want to lose weight, people with heart failure or history of heart attacks may benefit extra from taking SGLT2 inhibitors while also improving their blood sugar control. They have the potential to reduce hemoglobin A1C by around 0.8% or 0.8%. As you can see, they are not the most effective diabetic medications either, but you know, due to extra perks, many physicians prescribe them a lot nowadays. Now, how about risks and side effects of SGLT2 inhibitors? Well, they have the potential to cause vaginal yeast infections, that's fairly common, urinary tract infections in men and uh, women, as well as dehydration-related symptoms, because you will be urinating way more often than before, and if you do not replace the fluid loss, it can cause dehydration. And that low blood pressure can happen, even kidney failure or acute kidney failure happen if you become dehydrated. FDA also has warnings about SGLT2 inhibitors, and for this class of drugs, FDA has issued a number of warnings. Now, because they have the potential to cause rare but significant problems, such as acute kidney injury, the acid buildup in the blood, which we call ketoacidosis, infections in your groin, that can sometimes be severe. Particularly with regard to Invokana, it has been observed to increase the incidence of bone fractures as well, and even the, the danger of losing a limb or increased risk of foot amputations in patients who take Invokana. The advantages of these medications frequently outweigh the risks associated with them, so it is still worthwhile to discuss them with your healthcare professional if you are considering taking them. But for example, these meds won't be good for someone who already has frequent urinary tract infections or someone with advanced kidney disease who have high risk of dehydration or someone with history of diabetic ketoacidosis. The next on my list is alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. Now, these medications lower the level of glucose in your blood by reducing the absorption of simple sugars by your stomach and intestinal tract. Some brand names are Precos, Glycet, but most frequently, we use the generic Precos, which is acarbose, if you use them at all. They have the potential to reduce hemoglobin A1C by only 0.5%. So yes, they are also a weak agent. What are the risks of these? Well, they have the potential to produce gas, a lot of gas, and bloating. Also, due to the possibility of elevated liver enzyme function, you need to get your liver enzyme tested regularly if you are taking a carbose. Now, dopamine agonists. Now, when I say dopamine agonists, I don't mean a dope, although name implies that. Sorry for the disappointment, but these medications, although they are weaker agents, which again lower A1C by 0.5% at best, they lower glucose levels in the blood through enhancing the body's reaction to its own insulin, basically improving the insulin resistance. Nevertheless, exact mechanism is really not known, which is interesting that FDA approved a medication that we don't even know how it works, but it is there. So they have the potential to cause nausea as well as dizziness, headaches, and drowsiness. Now, the only medicine in this group is cycloset and it is still branded, still very expensive, the coverage is poor, and if they issued warnings on this medication as well because they have the potential to create low blood pressure and perhaps cause of, or perhaps a loss of consciousness. Next is bile acid sequestrants, which are substances that prevent the absorption of bile acid. Although it is unclear, again, how these medications lower the amount of blood glucose in your blood, we still use them. We don't know how they work, but they do uh, lower your blood sugar somewhat. Studies show that they can actually improve the blood sugar when used in conjunction with other diabetic treatments as well, which is encouraging, again, better than nothing. When combined with other diabetes drugs, they have been shown to reduce the A1C by around 0.5%. Again, not your strongest medicine. Now, when you combine a lot of medications, although they are weak, they can get you to your goal, especially along with lifestyle changes. Also, they have the potential to reduce also nausea, constipation, and upset stomach. But also, when combined with some other medications, these medications can actually raise the triglyceride levels. So if you already have high triglyceride in your blood, you have to be careful and keep an eye on your cholesterol level if you are taking these medications. And Wellcol is the most well-known medication in this group. Last in my list is inhaled insulin. Now, 
I will not talk about injectable insulins in this video except this one because insulin is insulin, right? It's harder to understand and they're more complex and most insulins are tailored to specific needs of patients. So I would let your doctor to handle that, preferably an endocrinologist. I am talking about inhaled insulin today because most people are not aware of that option. My goal is to increase awareness and show you your options that may not have been presented to you before. Now, the only brand out there for this purpose is called Afreza. Most people haven't even heard about inhaled insulin, but it can be a very good alternative to short-acting insulins. Most important features of this type of insulin is that you do not have to inject, but inhale, and Afreza work immediately, which means that it shows up in your blood immediately, while the regular injectable insulins may take up to 30 minutes to even show up and start showing any effect. Afreza does not stay in your system more than three hours either, compared to five to six hours of shorter acting insulins, which can lead to low blood sugar at three to five hour mark. Using an inhaler, this medication, this inhaled insulin, lowers the level of glucose in your blood pretty much immediately, and it may be beneficial for people who require typically less than 12 units or less per meal, because the largest cartridge, unfortunately, that they come in is 12 units. Although some of my patients will take like two of the 12 units back to back, or they will combine for eight and 12 unit cartridges depending on their needs. I see this insulin being popular among type one diabetics, especially young type one diabetics. People can see how fast it gets in their blood also, uh, especially when they are using Dexcom or Libre, that allows you to see a minute to minute changes in your blood sugars. Problems with Afreza include number one, sore throat, number two, coughing fits, especially in the beginning while you are getting used to it. FDA also issued warnings about Afreza. This medication should not be taken by anyone who have lung problems. People who use this drug must have their lung function tested on a regular basis and at the start of the treatment which includes breathing examinations that are fairly quick to do. We do FEV1 testing in our clinic, which is a quick test if you are planning to use Afreza, but it can lower your lung function in time. So we sometimes, you know, we not sometimes, every six months we need to check your lung function. Now keep this in mind. Due to the fact that diabetes continues to be a rising concern throughout the world, there is a constant demand for new treatments to assist in blood sugar control. Remember, medications are not to replace lifestyle improvements, but rather to support you if your lifestyle changes are not enough. Also remember, there are some supplements that you can rely on and some you cannot. Unfortunately, supplements just like medications differ in their efficacy and potency. Give a try to our advanced glucose support and super rare brain and let us know how they worked for you. Advanced glucose support is stronger, but super berberine can be used with it as well. If you only need to lower your blood sugar 10 to 20 points, I would say go for the super berberine first. If your blood sugar is in the 200s or 11 millimole or more, I would suggest going for advanced glucose support first and then adding super berberine if the effect is not enough. Again, thank you for watching everyone. I hope you're now more knowledgeable about the diabetic medications that you are taking or you are planning to take, and I hope it will help you achieve diabetes control and even get you in remission. Remember to check our diabetes reversal program as well. If you are a motivated individual, that will greatly help you to reverse your diabetes. Have a great day. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.